Welcome back, Supernags. I'm pleased to get you guys back to the channel. Thank you for sticking with me this whole entire time. If you guys clicked on the video, you know why we're here, so let's get right into it. Make sure you watch this whole video. We're gonna get into talking about the materials of the shoe. We're gonna talk about the history of the shoe and why it exists in the first place. We're gonna be looking at the on feet. See if you can rock the shoe, you know, the way I rock it, or hey, maybe you have your own style. And we're gonna go through some of the details on the shoe itself. You know, why uh, it's called the Tinker Alternate and what it means uh, for the history of the Jordan 7. So make sure you stay tuned to watch the whole video, all right? Of of course, I'm referring to the Air Jordan 7 Alternate Tinker Olympic. So right off the bat, these are not to be confused, even though it's very easy to do, with the Air Jordan 7 Olympic. From what I understand, obviously, as you guys know, Tinker Hatfield was a famous designer of Jordan brands, or Michael Jordan shoes during his tenure. When the 1992 Olympics rolled around, obviously, Jordan was wearing the Jordan 7. Tinker presented him with two options. It's the option that's pictured here, all right? And then it's this option right here. And obviously, as history shows, Jordan chose the first option, which is, hey, still fire, right? But then this shoe still existed. And this shoe was uh, shelved, I believe, until 2012, if I'm not mistaken. Now, I shouldn't know the history of it, but the 2012 shoe uh, was this one. And I believe the 2008 was a re-release of the one that Jordan wore in 1992. At some point, I will be adding the Jordan 7 just plain Olympic, the one that Michael Jordan actually chose to play in. But for right now, this is definitely a, a fire shoot for me. As you can see, it famously sports the red, white, and blue of our great American US flag. This shoe is a very nice shoe, especially when you're talking about Olympic pride and what uh, the Dream Team did during their tenure in Barcelona in 1992. Details on the shoe. This is a leather upper shoe mixed in with a blue nubuck. Okay, now again, I'm not quite the materials guy, but I do believe that this is a nubuck that is on the upper, on the inside of here. Uh, as you can see, hopefully the camera's picking that up. There's not a lot of motion in the ocean, as I like to say, which leads me to believe that this is not a true suede. But I do like the blend of materials. I actually like that they chose to not put leather on the upper here because the, uh, Blending materials, I think, just makes this a dope shoe. If you pan around to the top, around the ankle part, that there is a gold jump man. Obviously, it should be signifying a gold medal, as well as gold letters here, where it says Jordan, and gold aglets. That's a good word, aglets. Tips, <laughs> lace tips. The actual tongue itself is adorned with silver here, which is, which is nice, a cool little touch. Now, there is some subtle difference between shoe one and shoe number two. As I pick those up, you're gonna see that shoe number one does have a blue sock liner and shoe number two has a red sock liner. In addition, the pull tabs on both shoes are also different. Where the blue sock liner exists, so does the blue pull tab. And where the red sock liner exists, so does the red pull tab. Clearly seen that on the back where that triangular shield is, there's the number nine. Now for whatever reason, the NBA pro players did not use their NBA numbers to shoot or to play in their jerseys. They chose alternate numbers. And of course, Jordan famously chose number nine. That's why this shoe does have number nine on the rear shield. As you can see, that rear shield does have a red, white, and blue with stars and stripes in it, signifying, of course, the American flag. This shoe was and should be all about patriotism as it pertains to the Olympics and its greatness. What a lot of people did not like about this shoe, which is definitely different from the Olympic sevens, is that there's this paint gradient all right this red to white gradient on the uh midsole with the splatter of red some people just don't like that i think it's pretty cool i think it's a dope touch i think it's definitely different and gives the shoe uh, a unique look i mean you can imagine it being all white but i think it will look a little plain jane and you gotta love just the red heel on the back and they need to find a way to transition it to the front toe cap which is white and i think that was a pretty good pretty good job all right you do have the red white and blue mountain peaks on there again this shoe's all about patriotism and the olympics and it's really 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 dope one of the best things about jordan sevens as i always say is that no two jordan seven tongues are ever the same so when they cut these cloths and they do this this cutting you can see on the tongues that the patterns are not the same there are subtle differences and i think my particular pair does have wildly different patterns sock liner and tongue is red on this one sock liner and tongue is blue on this one which leads to a wildly different pattern on the front tongue 
which I really, really like. So being a red, white, and blue shoe, you can pretty much throw most anything on with it and it still look okay. Hope you guys enjoy the neon feet that you're seeing here as I talk. This is a very versatile shoe. This is just a really, really dope shoe. It's a part of the nostalgia and a part of history of Jordan collection, and I'm glad to have it. Uh, if you looked at my couple of videos ago, I mentioned that my Jordan 7 collection was really, really, really thin. It still is. And that's another reason why I'm definitely glad to have these guys and add them to the arsenal. I don't know when I'm going to wear them. We're approaching winter time here. So it's not necessarily a type to, <laughs> the time to be wearing a red, white, and blue shoe. And honestly, I may keep them on ice at least until maybe Memorial Day. You know what I mean? I don't think I'm going to wait till 4th of July to bust them out. But springtime, Memorial Day, I think it's apropos time to bust these guys out. The laces on this are just regular cloth laces, again, with that gold aglet. I do love the materials on it again. I do love that the Jordan logo is embossed with that spongy rubber material on the tongue, as well as the spongy rubber material on the side panel. Fantastic. This is a must cop for me. So typically I like to give you guys a rating and that rating just signifies how it compares to the rest of my collection. I obviously wouldn't buy a shoe that I didn't like, so it wouldn't make the collection or it wouldn't get a, a five or a six if it was uh, something I really liked with the exception of something that's up there, Black History Month twos. But other than that, um, I'm gonna give this shoe a solid eight. Now again, eight seems a little bit low compared to maybe some of the ratings I gave it in the past, but it's because I think the regular Olympic is a slight bit better. Even if the design of that shoe is not better than this one, the nostalgia, the history, and the fact that Jordan wore it on feet has to make it take precedence over this one. This shoe is technically an OG. Tinker design that shoe, as well as the Olympic ones that Jordan wore. MJ just happened to chose the one that he put on feet, and so the other one goes in the uh, goes on goes on the shelf. But doesn't make it a bad shoe. Just means he chose one that he liked a little bit more, and that's okay. You know what I mean? So I'm gonna have both of those in my collection eventually anyway. So again, shout out to those folks down there at Legends Boutique at UCF. Thank you guys for uh, being hospitable. And uh, hope you guys have enjoyed this video, found it entertaining. Appreciate you guys for sticking in there with me. More videos to come. And until uh, the next one, I'll catch you guys later. Peace.